let there be light. Our encouragement this morning is through that channel of light, Reverend John Scott, our beloved pastor. Please help me welcome Reverend John to the podium for that message of light. More, more, more. <laughs> Uh, just breathe with me. Good morning, beloved Temple of Light family. Through the earth, far and wide, wherever you are this morning, welcome to my heart, welcome to our hearts at the beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. In the very first book of the Judeo-Christian Bible, in the book of Genesis, and the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. Can we say that together? Let there be light. In a half voice. That's right, Senna. In a half voice. Let there be light. In a whisper. Let there be light. Say it in your heart. The second verse of the book of Genesis says, and there was light. So my friends, whenever darkness seems to be on the face of the deep in your own life, and when the earth of your human experience is void, to be void is to be empty, isn't it? When you feel empty of love, when you feel empty of finances, when you feel empty of compassion and spiritual discernment, say to the darkness, say it with me, let there be light. And my friends, light is synonymous with spiritual perception, spiritual discernment, and spiritual understanding. And it is a gift of God. It is one of the God qualities. And it's only available to us in so much as we are open and receptive to it. You ever been in your bedroom and it's locked up tight and the drapes are drawn and there's bright, beautiful sunshine streaming outside? If you're in Jamaica, Helsha beckons to you and fish on a Sunday morning with festival. But wherever you are in the world, there's the, this, at this time of year, there's this quality to the light. But if you're in your bedroom with the drapes drawn and the, the covers over your head, you remain in the dark. The light is there, no? The light is always there, my friends. But you have to be open and receptive. You have to get up and throw those drapes open and say, good morning, God. I'm here for you because you are here for me. And so, my friends, if you look at what's happening in Jamaica, and indeed all around the world at this time, you may be tempted to believe that darkness is still upon the face of the deep, and that the world is void, empty, of spiritual love, spiritual relationships, spiritual compassion, spiritual understanding, spiritual justice, spiritual integrity. And so I've come to tell you this morning to remind you and to remind myself that the darkness has no power over the light. And so if it is dark in your life at this time, in any domain, in any area, get up, open the drapes, Look out at the light and decree 
that this light is yours by divine right of being. You are a creature of this light. And when the creator called you into being, he said, this is good and very good. And so how dare you, how dare I, how e dare anybody ever dare to believe that we could be anything less than the radiance of the living spirit almighty, the one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause that is everywhere equally evenly present throughout all of creation and therefore present right where we are. Just say, let there be light. Roka Eriko, the Aramaic scholar who studied the language spoken by Jesus, the way shower and master teacher, says that in the original, it actually is, God said, let light be. Hmm. And light was, because light is. And so when he created you, he said, let you be. He called you by name and said, this is good and very good. The light must triumph. And therefore, I have titled my encouragement this morning, The Triumph of Light. There's a wonderful Celtic story, it's a teaching story, about two men whose farms were beside each other. And these two men were constantly squabbling and quarreling between themselves, but their wives were good friends. <laughs> There's a story there too, eh? That sometimes we men, the men that run the world, are at war, and our women are saying, we don't need to live like this. And so, the wives wanted them to be friends. And a sage was visiting the neighborhood, and they said to the sage, can you come and help our husbands to put down their enmity and become friends. And so, the running argument, the, the, the real basis of this dispute between them was a huge barn that stood on the border of their, of their two properties. And each man declared and believed and decreed that the barn was his. So they, that was the, the basis of the quarrel, territorial, bitterness. And so the sage said to them, why don't we have a competition? Here's what we'll do. We'll divide the barn into three equal parts. And on an appointed day, the challenge will be for each of us, you two men and myself, to fill our part of the barn to capacity. You can use anything you want fruits, vegetables, hay, even manure. You can use earth, whatever you want, but you must fill your third of the barn to capacity. Now each man thought, well, I can do that. I'm stronger than he is. And so they, they, they gladly accepted the challenge to fill their part of the barn. And the day was, up, uh, was appointed, and the mayor came along with all the townspeople that heard of this challenge and all of them gathered to see the joke and the mayor beat a drum. Officialdom always wants a part of the action, eh? So the mayor beat a drum and declared the competition open and the two men began working feverishly. They worked all day sweating in the sun to fill their part of the barn with fruits and vegetables and hay and dirt and manure and animals from the farm. They worked and worked and the sage just sat, he did nothing. He just sat smiling with his eyes closed, meditating. And after 12 hours, the two men, exhausted and, and covered in sweat and dirt and grime, had only filled about half of their part their third of the barn. And the sage got up from his meditation very quietly 
And he took a candle from his pocket and he placed it on the, the floor of the barn and with a match he lit the candle. And the light filled the building from floor to rafters. And the sage said, the light has triumphed. And he took the two men's right hands and he put them together. And there was a moment when, you know, you know, each man is saying, boy, I wonder if we should have done this. And eventually they embraced and the healing began between them. Because friends, the light shineth in the darkness. In the darkness of what we face here in this country and all around the world, in the darkness of human ignorance and human superstition, in the darkness where our egos are forever telling us that we can do it on our own. And you know, I was talking to myself this morning too. So often I think to myself, you can handle this. And when I do, I remember that the master, Jesus, the way shower, Yeshua bar Joseph, he too was tempted, wasn't he? According to that story, Satan took him to a high place. And you know in the Bible, when you read of high places, it means the pinnacle of consciousness. And there he was tempted. And Jesus realized that the temptation was not coming from outside of himself. Because there's no devil external to us. It was his ego saying, come on, you can make these stones into bread. And whatever you want, you can have. Your father God give you already, so you can have it. Just bow down and worship the external. And Jesus said the well-known words, get thee behind me, Satan. Friends, there is no Satan out there. It is our own minds. You ever in an argument with somebody and one man said to you, check what them tell you in confidence last week and fling it back in their face. And another man says, no. Your higher self can say to those thoughts of, of vengeance and unforgiveness and hatred and despair, get thee behind me. I'm reminded of a, a, a story of a pastor's wife. Um, she had, a couple of days after Christmas, gone back to the store. And then she came home, and she was just unpacking the only most beautiful gown ever from the shopping bag when her husband came in. And he said, darling, 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 I thought we promised that this new year we had a resolution. We weren't going to do any shopping. You weren't going to buy any more dresses, and I wasn't going to buy any more gadgets. She said, yes, dear, I know. I, I, I. He said, what were you doing at the, at the mall anyhow, trying to restrain his his chagrin, his impatience. And she said, I went back to take back that horror, hor hor horribly expensive blouse your mother gave me for Christmas. And she said, I was going to the return counter. And this dress fairly called out to me and said, come, you need me. You go, I go perfectly with that pair of shoes that's in your cupboard. And besides, you have to look good for your husband. You're the first lady of the church. You must look good. And before I knew what, darling, I was at the cashier and the credit card was in one hand and the dress was in the other. And the husband said, but sweetheart, you know all you have to do is to say, get thee behind me, Satan. And she said, I did. I said, get thee behind me, Satan. And he said, it looked darn good from behind you too. Friends, light and shine in your life. And you know, even though the infinite visible is constantly giving us this assurance, we have to resist the temptation to take matters into our own hands and try and do it ourselves. 
But temptation doesn't come from some devil or from some evil force that's external to us. Temptation comes from our own being from within us. And so we need to just be constantly aware, to stand guard at the gate of the temple, which means at the entrance to your mind, for the thoughts that formulate and for the temptation to think that we can do it on our own accord. And so when you find yourself in any kind of darkness this year, don't be tempted to lean on your own understanding. Instead, just become still and say those words. Let there be light. And in the silence, in the stillness and quietness, let the light envelop you. If you become still and, and, and use let there be light as a mantra, you will, you will feel the light filling every cell of your physical body, filling your consciousness, filling your mind, your intellect and your senses until you are actually glowing. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. In Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16, we read, and I quote, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but in a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. And the words that we know so well, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And that heaven isn't some place afar off, my friends. You know, we still think of it as God as something out there. I, you know, I even find myself, you know, you say, oh, help me, God, and you look up to the sky because we are told that it's out there somewhere, remote from you. But it's not. That God presence and God power is in your consciousness. It is within you. And that light only needs to be called into expression. But if you cannot keep the light of God bottled up within yourself, it's a spiritual light and it makes us light up the world. So, it brings me to your assignment. Everyone knows that when I speak at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and in fact, whenever I speak anywhere, I ask for action. I give an assignment. And you know, if I say to myself, if just 20% of the people that hear me take on that assignment, my mission has been accomplished. And so your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is all this week while you are exercising or doing chores, sing that pretty chant our cantor Hanif sang to begin our service this morning. I am a light, I am a light. I am a light in this world. And if there are children or grandchildren in the house, sing it to them. Sing, you are a light, you are a light, you are a light in this world. And then let them join you, and you can all sing, we are a light, we are a light, we are a light in this world. Angela, can we do it just through, just once? I am a light, I am a light, I am a light in this world. And I shine, and I shine so bright. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. Sing it to someone near you if you're at home. You, you are a light, you are a light, you are a light in this world. You are a you are a light, you are a light in this world, and you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright, and you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. We are a light. We are a light. We are a light, we are a light in this world. We are a light, we are a light, we are a light in this world. And we 
Wow. You know, my friends, one of the changes I would like us all to make this year is to begin including our young ones in our spiritual practice. Not with any sense of piety or solemnity, but as great fun. God is great fun. I love the story of the little boy who got a bright red ball for Christmas. And after breakfast on Christmas morning, he says to his mother, Okay, I'm going outside to play ball with God. And the mother said, oh, that's lovely. How are you going to do that, dear? And he said, Mom, you know, that children have a, a, a tone of voice they use to us adults when we fail to, to, to see what is quite clear to them, you know. Duh. He said, it's very simple, Mom. I throw the ball up as far as it can go into the air, and God throws it back. <laughs> Goldsmith. Joel Goldsmith, that monumental teacher of practical mysticism on whose writings I am basing my quiet moments in the garden on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, says in his book, The Heart of Mysticism, and I quote, the noise and confusion of the world obscure the light of God. The noise and confusion of the world obscure the light of God. It's like dark clouds that cover the sun, eh? But when we approach God in quietness and confidence, peace steals into our souls. And then in that moment of peace, the light of God, the light of spiritual wisdom and healing pours through and functions consciously within us. You ever seen when those gray clouds part and there's a stream of light, a beam of light, radiant, just, just shining through. It's one of the most beautiful sights I think you can, you can find in an evening sky when the light just bursts from behind the, the dark gray clouds. Wow. I think of opening my, the curtains of my bedroom and allowing the light to stream past the dark. So when darkness moves upon the face of the deep in my own life, when it happens in all our lives, don't beat upon yourself. Even the master teacher was tempted just say, let there be light. So I want to strongly recommend, this is not an assignment, I've just, it's just a recommendation, that you set aside one day each week when you fast from listening, watching the news of any sort. No news, no television, no talk shows. I know people say, but I need to know what's happening. But if you miss it for one day, my friends, you will find that the next day when you listen, you haven't missed a thing. It's the same story over and over and over. So I was listening to a nutritionist talking about um, resting our, our digestive systems by making one day a week a meat-free day. So she, she said, well, what about a meat-free Monday? So I'm saying, why don't we have a news-free Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday? You can designate the day. And instead of that news, listen to your favorite music. Just listen to music all day and let that cleanse your soul, cleanse your spirit, and just wash you clean of all the debris that is poured upon us out of the media. And it, when I say no news, I mean don't read no WhatsApp because they send you pictures of people who are breaking into the ABM in Timbuktu. And you go into a panic because you go to one in Ligony. Can we, just, can we just fast from that for one day a week? Can we give our souls the rest that we need? And for one day, think about God. Think about beauty. Listen to music. Listen to your own inner song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart's song. Sing with the family. You know, this morning's praise song came because I was at a friend's house and the, uh, the granddad was teaching the little girl the, um, 
the Jamaican version of that. Ta, 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 ta. It goes, one shift may have ratatiri, right where he tear, mama patchy, right where he patch, teacher beat me, teacher beat the galleton, right over, teacher beat the galleton, right over. Of course, culturally, we know that we no longer beat our children and turn them over, so I decided to put some new words, and our musical director, Angela Elliott, who can play the telephone directory, um, Helped, helped, and so we came up with this morning's come, 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 oh ye people, shine, shine, shine from the steeple. You look at the Temple of Light picture outside and there's a steeple. We need to let our light shine so that wherever the darkness is, we, as members of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, we as people who hunger and thirst after righteousness can let our light shine that others may see and say, there is something about that person. I don't know is what but I want to be like them. You know, one day I was in a hurry, I rushed out of here and I was at the supermarket and just rushed to pick up something and then waited half an hour in a line, you know, with one item. And when I got to the cashier, she said, is something wrong, Mr. Scott? And I said, no, 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 not at all. Why you ask? She said, you're not singing today. I never realized that as I go up and down the aisles of the supermarket. It used to be when I have a lesson with Mr. Dexter, the the next morning, and I'm in fear and trembling that I haven't got it right, so I would walk up and down, pushing the trolley and singing. But people notice, my friends. People, people form an opinion of not just who you say you are, but how you are and how you impact them. And you never know, you never ever know how many people you touch as you walk through life. So come, 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 all you people. Shine, shine, shine from the steeple of your consciousness. Let your bright and beautiful shine touch lives. You never know who you're healing. You never know who will feel illumined and uplifted and reassured that the light does shine. And because of you, open the drapes and let the light in. So if you're serious about change, and remember I shared with you, change stands for consciously having a new God experience. If you are serious about having a new, about consciously having a new God experience this year, you have to turn on the light. You know, I love the way in, 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 in Jamaican parlance, in Jamaican patois, we have double, we have plays on the meanings of words. So, you know, in Jamaica, we don't, pronounce the, the H in TH. You know, we say ting and thought and therefore. And so the light becomes delight. So when the darkness is upon the face of the deep and you feel that the light has gone from your life, Turn on delight. Find delight in your friends. Find delight in your home. Find delight in the, a tangerine that you're eating. I had a tangerine yesterday. Oh, I think that was what was in the Garden of Eden. Delicious. No, it was actually an OTT apple. But find delight in your life. Because... Delight shineth in the darkness, and the darkness can't even begin to understand who and what you are as a being of light, as a candle of God, as a purveyor of beauty and love and truth and goodness, so that in your presence no longer will the earth be void, be empty of integrity, and love, and beauty, and joy, and goodness, and compassion. Because you shine, and you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. Namaste.
smorgasbord of messages of truth this morning. But this is indeed a property of light. We have a musical director that can make music out of a telephone directory. We have a pastor who sees messages in everything. So all we are left now to do is radiate who we really are. The messages were great this morning. Have instead of a fast, have a music fest, one day a week, <laughs> obliterating everything else. Encourage our children in spiritual practices. And who you are speaks volumes wherever you go. Wow. Take your pick this morning. Mm. Take your pick. You have it all. Thank you, Reverend John. It was truly a wonderful and inspiring message. I can clap you again, honestly. Thank you. 